Good morning and welcome to today's edition of the London Session Open. Today is uh, well, it's February 27th and it's about 7.34 p.m. in London when I'm recording this market update. Uh, you should be able to see my screen. Uh, let me know if you don't, um, but we should be live. Using a bit of a different setting today. I'm not actually using the same computer as before, so uh, hopefully you won't have too many issues. But uh, yeah, we should be live. Uh, we're going to uh, take a look at the markets as we usually do, but we'll begin with spending a few seconds on the risk disclaimer. Okay, that should be it. So, all right, guys, let's uh, begin. And we're going to begin by taking a look at the euro, and then we're going to cover stock markets. Uh, it's quite some big swings, uh, especially in the German DAX that is down with 0.71%, 81 points to be exact. And so we're going to talk a bit about that. Uh, but let's begin with the euro, and uh, then we'll proceed with the GBP USD. Uh, so what's going on here? Not much really. The market remains in this sideways trading pattern. It's been a very boring market for I think since summer last year if you're trading Forex and a very difficult one if you're trading trends like I am. There's not too much to do really except just waiting for a breakout. So I'm still looking at 112.12, break that to the downside. That makes it interesting as well break the upside here and we can potentially rally towards something like maybe 18. Uh, so we still need to wait for that break until that happens. There's not really too much for us to do rather than just waiting for, for this range to end. Um, the pattern here of 10909 is derived by taking the difference between this level here and this low down here. Here's GBP versus the USD, and the market is trying to break upwards. So uh, it makes perfect sense given, uh, given what's going on here with the um, UK politics. So Theresa May has opened up for a vote. Uh, it should be early uh, next month uh, on either to sort of uh, have a hard Brexit or delaying um, Brexit altogether. Um, because they voted before to avoid hard Brexit, it's most likely will have a delay to Brexit that gives them more time to negotiate. And, and at the same time, you know, uh, you got the biggest opposition party, uh, Labour, sort of opening up for potentially the people of uh, England and UK, or the UK really, to have another vote on Brexit. Um, given that now more information uh, about the implications are available than before. So that is also something that the market is clearly pricing in here. Now, it's possible to trade this. Um, you have a head and shoulders with the left, right shoulder and head and then i think if we take out something like 133 that could potentially be enough um i'm a bit skeptical though but if we take out this level i think we potentially can go upwards what i would look for here is the break 233 and then we really need to see quickly go towards maybe 134 or 50 um because that would be sorry uh yeah 134 maybe so on 100 pip or so, because that would make it okay to some extent to potentially reduce the stop loss to today's low at 132.28. So a break to 133, goes up to 134, then you have a bit of a buffer of about 100 pip in profit, and then stops can go here. Um, so that would be something if one wants to trade this, because if it doesn't go all the way up, if it just goes a little bit like this and then goes down, then it's probably gonna correct. Uh, I think, it can correct much more. I think, you know, maybe down to 32 or something like that makes sense. And then from 32, uh, build that breakout. My personal preference is actually not do nothing here. And hopefully the price goes down to 132. And then tomorrow we break 133. So then we have, uh, you know, long from 33 stop loss just below 32. So you're looking at a hundred pip stop loss uh, versus a potential reward then of uh, maybe up to 700 pip or so 
um, because that's really what the head and shoulders is dictating. There's also interesting uh, things happening in um, GBP versus the uh, euro. And I'm going to do an article about this a little bit later on. And you're going to be able to see this on, uh, um, on um, ATFX. Just stay tuned to my Twitter at AlexFX00. Uh, you may also just check out uh, ATFX website. So let me see if I can load that. So this, the outlook for that is going to be um, an article form. And uh, it looks interesting as well. Um, There's a rectangle pattern um, that is tradable if you want to. It's a decent sugar ratio as well. Um, so it's going to go under the forward slash UK forward slash English. And on the market analysis, it should be, should be available here. Um, actually, you stick to my Twitter. I'll send you the direct link. I can see here that the new link has not been uploaded yet. Um, so just stick to the link I'm going to send to you guys. Uh, okay, uh, dollar versus the Japanese yen had a quite significant decline this morning and it's still challenging sort of support. So the market is bullish by 110.19. And I think the reason for this sort of declining the way it is is because there was news, I think, uh, two Indian uh, fighter jets were shut down, shot down, uh, and I didn't really, I just read the headlines, but I would have guessed it implies that it maybe it was Pakistan that uh, uh, gunned down those planes, alternatively some terrorist organization or so, um, but that is causing a bit of jittery because there's always been tensions between um, this India and Pakistan, and things happened, I think there was uh, some... Um, on the Pakistan side, or from the Indian side, I think they attacked some targets in Pakistan or so of a week or so two ago. Uh, so there's a lot of tensions. Both of these countries have nuclear weapons. Not that I assume anything extreme is going to happen. I think would be, I don't know, I personally think nothing's going to happen, but that definitely sort of rattles the market a bit. The market so tends to have these reactions. On any sort of terrorist or sort of military conflicts like that, you'll have the market sort of being bearish for a few days, and then when things settle, uh, the market sort of resumes. Because it's very, I personally think it's very unlikely anything's gonna happen between India and Pakistan anytime soon, at least anything extreme. Uh, this sort of, anyways, weighing a bit here, and I think it's the same that is weighing on something like the German DAX. So the German DAX, uh, see if we can load that, is down um, right now by 0.73%, and it's back at support really. Uh, I wouldn't give up on this yet. Um, you have a big head and shoulders with your head, your left, and your right shoulder here on the daily. We had the breakout on the 20th. This is something we already discussed uh, about the break to the upside. And the market moved up, trading sideways, and you know, just testing support again. So as long as we don't cut through below the 11,000, 359 level, which is down here. I see no reason for this to, to abandon this. In fact, it should really bounce from where we are right now. And ideally, it doesn't trade much lower than yesterday's low. As for gold prices, uh, there's not too much change here, really. Uh, we're dealing with a nice, healthy uptrend. The trend is bullish about 1,302. And we touch sort of levels that are interesting here, buy levels. And I think we could potentially go upwards here. But uh, you know, it might go easily down a bit more, maybe 13, 18 or something, and then potentially upwards. You also need to pay attention to the fact that if you're looking from a big picture perspective, this market had a very good run. It sort of traded from lower levels here all the way up, and it needs to take out 1,376. Of course, if stock markets decline much lower, we could potentially go upwards, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. And as well, in regards to inflation, crude oil prices came down quite a bit, uh, as you know, from their October highs, and they still remain relatively low. So you probably see lower inflation going forward across the world. So buying gold to hedge against inflation, that's most likely not going to help. Uh, so I don't really think this is going to do too much help. Uh, uh, and I don't really think we're going to have a break to uh, 13.76. So you need to be careful here. I wouldn't be too heavy here. 
until we break this level. If we break this level, you, know, you have head, uh, left, and right shoulder. Turns you can see this is a right shoulder. This is also a big ascending triangle. So a break to something like 1376 would eventually, uh, if we treat this like a big head and shoulders, then you're looking at potentially uh, remove it to maybe 1700. It's like 23 percent move. Definitely tradable, uh, but we need to break out, take out these levels. Crude oil, um, there's not too much to report on here. So the market moved down a bit. Uh, didn't have too much of sort of traction going, this decline on, on Trump comments. I think the market could continue to potentially trade a little bit lower and then go upwards. There's nothing really, really 100% tradable here. I would rather focus on maybe something like Brent crude oil, which has some cleaner levels to work with. And Brent crude oil, we are retesting the uh, inversion and shoulders breakout. So it might be we'll get a resumption there uh, and sort of further move upwards. Um, S&P, S&P is under pressure. Uh, so a few days ago, uh, we had this reversal on the 25th. And that's a reversal candle on the daily, which happens to be at these major levels. The market is now under pressure. And if we do trade below 27, of 64.8, so below the February 21st low, then we will most likely have created a major high here. I think at that point, we might have a bigger correction. Uh, if we would just take a fib from the very low levels all the way to the high, it we could potentially correct down to 2660, which is the first fib. And it's also around these levels here, which will be quite interesting because if we really go down like this, then we would have created the right shoulder of a massive head and shoulders with two, these being the left, and then this being the right, and then this shoulder and this being the head. So it's looking quite interesting. And if that would be the case, well, then um, you're looking at this, uh, which is a 20% uh, percent move, uh, which could be, in essence, just generate something like this. So we'll be trading at 3,326 uh, if we create our right shoulder. Um, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of data, of course, everybody's sort of rather bearish. Um, I'm not sure who's going to be right or wrong. The macroeconomists, some macroeconomists that were calling for this decline and sort of this decline and sort of decline. Sorry, I think I said the same word three times. People are looking for this uh, sort of move to the downside, slower growth, potential recession. They were warning about this uh, sort of already here, I think in March, April of last year, the market went up with from the low to the high with up with about 15% and then eventually tumbled. But these guys have been screaming sell and sell for a long period of time. And yeah, we eventually had that tumble and uh, now we're back up again. So uh, things will turn bad at one point. You just need to think about it rationally. The unemployment rate in the US, so is it three and a half, 3.4? As a limitation, it can't go below zero, right? If it can't go below zero, then you know what, what's the other way of looking at it? Well, from um, I think it, it is its extremes has been at eleven percent, so it's closer to a dent and sort of bottoming out really, than sort of cut it, reducing unemployment with half or something like that. I think the only time unemployment rate was much lower was. I think 1973 or the 70s or so during the Korea War, because during wartime, governments are much more happy to spend money or they have to spend money on sort of producing uh, uh, sort of things for, for going to war. And I would guess as well that people, uh, long a lot of sort of able men and women, but men, uh, men and women today, but maybe back then, mostly men would leave and that would mean, mean that there was far less people in the labor force to work. So yeah, anyway, I don't want to complicate two things. For now, I'm just bullish, and the trend is bullish about 27, 64.8. Uh, bigger picture, yeah, maybe we'll go lower, and that's what we just discussed. Break here could potentially open up for that decline. And then you have the German DAX, which we already discussed. The trend is bullish from these levels, so the market should really trade upwards and not uh, lower. It's a little bonus today. Uh, check this out. This is your dollar index. This is your daily chart. You got a triple bottom here and uh, like a triple 
top here one two three and then you have this level here there's not a lot of activity going on here guys there's not a lot of activity and if you're just trading forex i think it's the wrong way to do it I think stock markets maybe some energy maybe gold is sort of where you see some action in the euro dollar you know you have a lot of markets you're trading sideways there are some possibilities in forex in regards to gbp but biggest challenge there is what if something happens this saturday or this sunday and then the market gaps you know you can have some big issues there with uh, uh positioning and that's why i'm straying away from from trading gbp okay uh guys if you have any questions just put them in the chat box uh don't be afraid um as well i hope you have all been able to see my screen uh, i didn't get a new reply so i just continued here um i'm getting like an error message on my side so i do hope you actually saw the screen uh no one of you guys let me know <laughs> if i was live or not so for any questions you put them in the box now and as well just so you know guys uh we did launch or we did manage to upload the videos on youtube so if you ever miss out uh, search for atfx uk on youtube and you will be able to follow us let's see if i can load that so yesterday's video was there and uh, let me see here um, Here we go. This is one you're looking for. It's a new started uh, channel, but uh, if you click on videos, you'll find it. This is yesterday's video. Okay, we don't have any questions. We're going to wrap things up. Uh, guys, thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if you have any questions about ATFX as well, do let me know. Uh, they're offering some really nice uh, offerings right now in regards to um, spreads. Uh, in essence, you're getting spreads that with many other brokers, you need to have maybe 25,000 pounds to get access to those sort of tight spreads. Here, you're getting that for far less. We're talking about 5,000 pounds. And right now on the website, it even says $5,000. So I did go back to the sales manager and ask him what's right, $5,000, so 5,000 pounds. He said usually is $5,000, oh, sorry, uh, pounds. Uh, it's just that it hasn't been updated yet. Uh, and But if I have anyone that is interested, then they can open up with uh, the equivalent of 5,000 in pounds. So that would make it for less than 3,000 something um, in pounds to get those very tight spreads. Uh, ATFX itself is regulated in, uh, in the UK by the FCA. And the global CEO uh, is a guy that used to work for FXCM. So it's a well-run company uh, and sort of echoes a little bit of the good things from FXCM when it comes down to customer services um, but on other things tries to do things better by offering share trading more products tighter spreads more flexibility so a lot of the stuff that uh, FXCM uh, does not have anymore okay guys thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow about the same time here at uh, ATFX daily market update Thank you.